Welcome back. It's Saturday, September 19th, 2020. It's 39 degrees. What the hell? It's September. I should be out on my deck sipping a cocktail when I get home. Not putting on a sweatshirt and sitting on the couch. Anyway, it's that time. Where I make a video and Eric Rebus calls me a racist. No, in all seriousness, bro. If you think I'm that much of a racist, why do you keep watching? I'm just going to start deleting your comments instead of giving you the time of day. Anyway. Now that we got that out of the way. Yeah, I just gave a troll a minute of notoriety. Good for you, bro. Good for you. So this past week, I've been pumping out a series of videos that I've been titling Civil War 2020 and then a topic, right? But I got to thinking I have a lot of time to do that. My job's about 90% downtime, 10% go time. Been a little bit more than 10% the past couple of weeks, but what have you, right? Is it actually a civil war that we're looking at, or is it a revolution? If you look at civil war in a true sense of the word, it's a war between two factions of the same nation, one of which is trying to split off from the other, the other of which is trying to preserve it, right? Like the American Civil War, the War of Northern Aggression, War of Secession, what do you want, whatever you want to call it. But since most of us call it the Civil War, we'll just go with that for the time being. The war between the states. Whereas if you look at the American Revolution, that was a faction within another country's governance that wanted no more part of that country whatsoever. Right? They weren't trying to split the existing country. Well, I guess if you're an Englishman, you could say it was a civil war. They called it the War of Insurrection. In American history terms, it was the American Revolution. Because we as Americans were fighting to break free of the British and form, take the 13 original colonies and make them the United States of America. So what's going on today? You've got two factions, right? You have the right and the left. Let's just dumb it down completely. The left wants to take our form of government and change it, similar to what the American colonists, the revolutionaries, the insurrectionists wanted to do in 1776. They wanted to eliminate the form of government, i.e. the British Crown, that was lording over them, taxing them, uh, basically using the 13 colonies as a means for paying for their wars with the French. In this case, you've got the left that wants to not separate and form their own country, but change the government of this country. They want to take a representative constitutional republic and change it into a communistic socialistic government. I wish I'd saved the videos that I did on this years ago on the old channel because I could just repost it and it would be way better. Um, but I'm going to do my best to break this down. <coughs> So you have the left, it's diametrically opposed to the right, right? Democrats versus Republicans, if you want to go that route. Some of us will say they're two sides to the same coin. Some of us will say one is controlled opposition. Some of you will say one is right, one is wrong. And the others will say this one is right, this one is wrong. Forget all that for a second. You've got two factions that are diametrically opposed. That seems to be the way it is. The days of moderate Democrats, moderate Republicans that can meet in the middle, shake hands, 
have a beer and go their own way seems to be gone for any litany of reasons right you can list them off I'm sure my friend that I mentioned at the beginning of the video will come down and list a few of his own regardless pick your reason the two sides are diametrically opposed the right if you will wants to preserve the constitutional republic that the founding fathers gave us the bill of rights the constitution and its 22 amendments or 24 amendments and everything that comes with it the left wants to overthrow it and replace it with a form of socialism. Whatever form of socialism, whatever flavor, take your pick. The form that hasn't worked in any other country that has been tried, right? So is that necessarily a civil war or a revolution? I would contend that I've been wrong for as many videos as I've titled Civil War. I would say having rethought it is more of a revolution because you're trying to take one form of government and replace it with another. Not break free of one form of government to go form your own country. One group wants to take the country and transform it into what they believe it should be. The other group wants to take the country and preserve it as what they believe it should be. As what we got from our founding fathers. And if you look historically at any revolution, right, be it the French Revolution, the American Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution, it started in pockets. With mobs rioting. For what reason? Pick your poison. Usually it's some displeasure with the current form of government. And it would start in one city and it would percolate, 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 pop. Until you have a battle. Or a skirmish. Start with a skirmish. Then it would spread a little bit. Percolate, 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 pop. We have another skirmish. And in between there, you've got the guerrilla tactics of, um, you know, random pop-up violence against the opposing side, right, by the revolutionaries, like Boston Tea Party, for example. That was guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla warfare is the best, really. Those guys were so sick of being taxed on tea that they dumped it into the dam, into the harbor. The little uh, the pockets in the Bolshevik Revolution, right? It'd start out in one city. You know, there'd be a riot. There'd be a skirmish between Tsar, Tsar's forces, Royal Russian troops, and the Bolsheviks. It would go back, it would go forth, it would go back, it would go forth. And then there would be some kind of random bombing. You know, so I skipped over the, the French Revolution because they went straight from skirmishes to battles and freaking guillotines. Those guys were freaking monsters in their day. That's a whole other, <coughs> a whole other topic. If you really want to ride my ass, just go around me. Um, look at Nazi Germany, right? You had all those different factions fighting in the streets during the Weimar Republic. You had the National Socialists. You had the Communists. You had. Uh, was the third group. And eh, somebody can look it up and put it down below. There was a bunch of them that were fighting with each other in the streets, right? The, uh, the brown shirts, initially, 
We're fighting with the communists. We're fighting with the, the Weimar troops. And you'd have a skirmish here, a skirmish there. Then you'd have some insurrection done in the form of like a, um, a bombing of, oh, I don't know, a beer hall, right? Everybody can remember that one from history. Look at 1980s Ireland. That one never even got to battles. You'd have uh, um, the Irish Republican Army wanted to free Ireland or free Northern Ireland. They wanted that out for British control. And you'd have a, a skirmish here. The, uh, the IRA would bomb some British troops there. You'd have another skirmish in the streets, followed by some more guerrilla warfare. And it went on and on through the 80s, through the 90s, until Ireland finally got Northern Ireland. They were reunited. But that was a revolution, not a civil war. They weren't trying to form one country out of a portion of another, right? So you carry it forward to today, 2020. You've got a riot here, a riot there, a little insurgency, some, uh, some nasty guerrilla warfare tactics, right? Thank God they haven't figured out the whole nail bomb thing yet. And it just kind of spreads from place to place with the initial... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The initial ignition point remaining the same in constant state of riot. Look at the city of Portland. That mess has been going on for a couple of years in Portland. That's been going on since 16. So we're going on, what? It will be four years shortly after November. And they've just escalated it and escalated it and escalated it. And it's spread. Into other portions of the country. I would contend that we're still in the skirmish stage of this because you haven't seen, in its truest sense, a battle yet, right, between opposing forces. You've seen skirmishes between Antifa and various local PDs. You've seen skirmishes by BLM and local PDs. And then you've seen both groups, minus the local PDs, skirmish with the feds. Somebody will get arrested, everybody else will run away. Wash, rinse, repeat. And then add another scene. Fueled by the excuse of racial injustice, economic injustice. Take your pick. I'm not exactly sure anymore what these guys are rioting over. But it still continues. The only thing that I hesitate to say gives it lack of credence as an actual revolution is that these aren't centrally organized groups, right? They have their, their local chapters. But there's no real centralization to them. 
they have their stated goals. Yeah, they're not necessarily in line with each other, I guess, is the word. Antifa wants a communist government. Black Lives Matter, the organization, even though the or one of the co-founders got on a national television interview and stated that we're trained as Marxists and in Marxist tactics, claim they're out for racial justice. Okay, that sounds great. But none of these splinter groups, if you will, are on the same, are reading from the same sheet of music. They have no stated goals for short term and long term. It seems like you've got freaking basement dwellers, Call of Duty playing, city kids out on the West Coast in Seattle and Portland that look like they haven't seen sunlight in I don't know how many years. LARPing with wooden shields and freaking bats against cops with tear gas rubber bullets and riot gear. And in the cities, you've got, or in the other cities, really, you've got a mishmash of Antifa, BLM, and general criminals that are just out for the looting. And before you come down and tell me, no, it's not these people, well, there's plenty of BLM t-shirts on the so. Sorry to break your bubble, Eric. It's a thing. Then in some cases, you've got city governments that want absolutely nothing to do with this, right? They squash these riots quick. like the city of Lancaster. They got one night of rioting. The judge slapped a million dollar cash bail on everyone that was arrested for rioting, with the exception of the juvenile who got $100,000 and the one guy that was on probation who just did not pass go, went straight back to prison. And then they saturated the streets with law enforcement so that this could not be repeated the next night. In other cities, you've got governments that seem to sympathize with the rioters. But at the same time, those same governments are still out to protect their own asses. So do they really sympathize with the rioters or do they just not want to upset them? You know? When somebody cries off with their head, they can say, well, well, well not mine. I was on your side. I didn't stop you. got all these little mini things going on across the country with a ballpark similar goal but no centralized same goal or nothing concrete to tie them together is centralized right majority of them are trying to do the same thing. Depose the U.S. government as it stands now and replace it with something else. Which, in 20 minutes of rambling, is how I come to the term of revolution over civil war. Talk about it down in the comments. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up, share, subscribe. 
um, last warning to Eric Rebus, if all you're going to do is call me a racist and tell me I shouldn't be a cop, I'm just going to start deleting your comments. If you can come at me with something intelligent, by all means, we can engage. If not, just go away. Anyway, guys, have a great weekend. Be safe. Watch your six. Out for now.